You can spend $500 on a suit and get a great deal. You can spend $2,000 on a suit and still get a great deal. But you could also spend $100 or $1,000 and still get ripped off. Confused? Let me explain. What you have to understand is that price does not equal quality. In today's video, gents, I'm looking to eliminate the confusion, to point out the warning signs you need to watch out for so that you don't get ripped off when you're buying a suit. Warning sign number one, the company you're buying your suit from, they don't want to talk about the fabrics. Here's the deal. Any reputable company selling suits should be able to talk about the fabrics. If you're working with an individual tailor, he should want to geek out about the fabrics. If they're not using the right fabrics, quality fabrics, then you can bet they are cutting corners in other places. Now, when it comes to quality suit fabrics, the best in the world, we're going to see coming out of Italy, England, and France. Now, you're also going to hear the names of mills. These are the individual companies that are making the fabric, many of them for hundreds of years. So, you're going to hear companies like Dorme, Retta, you're going to hear Xenia, you're going to hear VBC. So, now let's talk about the super numbers. You're going to see the super 110, the super 120, super 140, super 220. You're going to see 80s. What actually, what do all these numbers mean? So, in general, the higher the number, the finer the weave of the individual fiber and the tighter the weave of the fabric. Also, the lighter it's going to be in general. Understand though, there isn't a set standard. So, one company's super 120 is not the same as another company's super 120. It's like comparing apples to oranges. But in general, you're going to find the lower the number, usually a bit lower the price and I think that's a great place to start. A super 100, a super 120, it's perfectly fine and it's an all-purpose suit. Now, that being said, you need to understand your choice of fabric can have a huge effect on the final price of the suit. I have a tailor friend, he can make one custom suit for you, it's a thousand bucks. Another custom suit, $5,000. The only difference, the material that's used. So, what's going on? What's up with the price difference? Really, it depends on the mill that's doing the manufacturing and what goes into the fabric. So, you're going to find some fabrics have very specialty fibers. They're going to have mohair. They're going to have cashmere. The average suit has about three to three and a half yards of fabric in it. And you're going to find, you can find a yard of fabric for, you know, $20, $30. Other times, it will be $200, $300, $500 a yard, depending on what mill it comes from. And again, what uh, what's in the fabric. Now, throughout this video, guys, you're going to see a number of suits. I'm going to be wearing two suits. All of this brought to you by Spira McKay, the sponsor of today's video. Guys, what I love about Spira McKay is that they were founded on the belief that great fit and high quality doesn't have to be at a luxury price. They're making great quality suits, amazing shirts. And when you go over to their website, you're going to find they've got neckties, they've got pocket squares, they've got everything you need to look great. So, Spira McKay, not only do they have a wide variety of sizes, but they've got contemporary and slim fit. You actually get a size that works with your body type. And we just talked about fabrics and these guys are proud to talk about their mills over in England or Italy and talk about fabrics they're using such as VBC. And let's talk about what's on the inside of a Spira McKay jacket. So, you're going to see the half canvas construction. That's on all their suits and all of their sports jackets. Italian canvas chest pieces, the Japanese Bemberg lining, we've got German under collars and shoulder padding, bullhorn and nut buttons and the Seuss bras. This is a little piece of cloth that absorbs sweat. And let's not forget the trousers. We've got the pleated curtain waistband and one of my favorite details, we've got the three button front. Why is this important? Because this better distributes the pressure on the front area and it just makes the front of the trousers look better. Gents, if you're in the market for a great fitted suit, high quality shirts or accessories like pocket squares, neckties, you want to check out Spira McKay. I've inspected their clothing, a great company. I'm linking to them down in the description. Look at those deals. This is some of the best deals you're going to find out there. You're going to love what Spira McKay has for you. So, the next warning sign, you may be overpaying for a suit. You don't know the difference between off the rack, custom and bespoke. So, off the rack, these are suits made in a factory, sent out to stores and this is the vast majority. This is 98, 99% of the market. And if you can find the right brand, you just get minor adjustments on this thing and you've got a suit that looks good on you. But what if you're hard to fit? What if you want something special? What if you actually can't find anything off the rack that works with your body type? Then that's when you want to look at custom, also known as made to measure. So, this is where they actually make the garment to you and they can adjust a lot of things. They can't adjust everything, but they can take, you know, depending on what your arm length is, depending on how big your torso is, they can actually adjust the garment. Now, what is bespoke? Bespoke is the art. This is where they individually make the garment. Everything is made for that person and this is when the price starts to skyrocket. And talking about price, bespoke is usually where we're going to see the highest 
Custom and made to measure right, you know, in the middle and then off the rack is going to be the lowest. Although off the rack when it comes to designer suits can be astronomically high. So that's just a general guide. It doesn't always hold. The next warning sign that you're going to be overpaying for a suit, you're dealing with a salesman that only cares about the sale versus a salesman that actually is old school and understands that it's more than the sale. It's about the relationship and he wants to put you in a suit that looks great even if he's got to direct you elsewhere. You want to find these kind of guys. They're hard to find especially since a lot of companies go through people but they are out there and where you're going to find these guys are oftentimes the higher end menswear stores and these are great places to walk into maybe you can't afford everything but the great you know added bonus to this is that you touch and you try on some of the best and you get an idea of what is out there until you touch cashmere you don't really know what cashmere is until you actually see a horn button and compare it to plastic you know what the difference is and what to look for that's the beauty of finding and going to higher end menswear stores the next warning sign that you could be overpaying for a suit you don't know how a suit should actually fit your body. Now, when it comes to custom and bespoke suits, in theory, the fit should be spot on, but that's not always the case, especially the first time you're getting it because the tailor can have an interpretation of how close of a fit you want it, but it really is about the communication between you and the tailor and the number of fittings. So, if you're going to get something bespoke, you should have multiple fittings in person. However, for the vast majority of men, they're going with off the rack. And how do you make sure an off the rack suit is going to work for your body type? First, you try it on. Second, you take it to get adjusted. So, let's get to trying it on. When you try on that suit, there are certain things that are very difficult to adjust and honestly not worth it. So, you want to make sure it fits properly in these areas. First up, the shoulders. It has to fit you in the shoulders. Getting a shoulder adjusted, that's like heart surgery and it's not worth it. Then, let's look at the chest, the torso area. You got about an inch to an inch and a half that you can bring it in or that you can possibly let it out. I say possibly because not all suits will actually let out very well. So, it's always better to have it a little bit large because you can bring that in versus too tight. And let's not forget about the length of the jacket. This is really important to proportions to tell if the jacket's the right length. Just simply put your arms right down next to your body and you should be able to curl your fingers up and right between your palm and your fingers, you should be able to feel about an inch to an inch and a half of material. If you're a taller guy, over six foot, it's okay if the jacket's a bit longer. If you're a shorter guy, maybe five foot four, you want to make sure the jacket is that length or maybe a bit shorter. And let's talk about sleeve length. This is actually one of the more easier adjustments out there. Most jackets are going to make their sleeves a bit longer. So, you're going to want to bring up the sleeves about an inch to an inch and a half. You want to show anywhere from half an inch to three quarters an inch of shirt cuff when your arms are down. Now, let's focus in on the fit of the trousers and let's focus in on the crotch. It's pretty obvious you don't want it too tight in the crotch area, but a lot of guys go to the complete opposite, too loose and this is bad as well. Why? It makes your legs look stunted whenever you've got a lower hanging crotch. Now, adjusting the crotch on a pair of trousers is actually pretty difficult. So, I would advise you make sure in nail you get this fit right because the other ones are relatively simple. If the trousers are too tight or a little bit too loose, well, guess what? You can let out some material, you can bring it in. Although, if you bring it in too much, it can't throw off the proportions of the back pockets. So, pay attention to that. When it comes to the length of the trousers, you want to just go for a simple hem. This is a very common adjustment. And now, let's talk about the actual leg of the trousers. You can get that slimmed up. It's an expensive alteration but if you feel it's too loose and you want to go for a slimmer cut, this is something that you can go for a more tapered look just by talking with your tailor and having them bring it in. So, the next warning sign that you're overpaying for a suit, you don't know the name of your tailor. Why does this matter? Because your tailor is the person that's going to get you what you want with that suit. It's going to make it fit. Now, if you're going to be buying from your local menswear store, it could be that they've got a tailor right in there and they build that into the price when they sell the suits, especially if they provide all the alterations. But for a lot of times, if you're going to buy something off the web, or if you've got a jacket you haven't worn for two years, you want to take it into your tailor, get it adjusted and you want to make sure that they understand what you want. How do they know this? Because you talk to them, you explain to them, you tell that tailor exactly what you want, what look you're shooting for and you work with them and you develop a relationship. You should have a seamstress or a tailor that you can go to to make your good clothing look even better. So, the next warning sign that you're overpaying for a suit, you don't know how to spot quality details. 
So one of the first things you want to look at is the inside of the jacket. By looking at the inside, the construction, the materials used, you can tell a lot about how much the manufacturer cared about what they were making. So the first thing we notice is the lining. Now, historically, lining has been made from a number of different materials. The higher end used to be made from silk. Nowadays, they're using Bemberg, which is a much better material. It's more durable. What you don't want to get is polyester. Yes, there are some low-end suits out there using polyester, and you want to make sure to avoid that like the plague because basically it makes the suit non-breathable. Now, next up, you're going around and you're looking at the threading. You're looking at the stitching that's holding everything together, and it should be nice stitching. You shouldn't have loose threads all over the place. Right here, we've got a Seuss bra, so this is basically an extra little bit of material that's sewn in there to absorb sweat, a nice detail. When somebody spends extra money on things like this, you know that, okay, if they care about these details, then the inside of the jacket is actually going to be pretty good. Now, some of you guys may be wondering about half line versus fully lined jackets. This is a fully lined jacket where the lining covers the entire inside of the jacket, but you're going to see some out there that actually they only go halfway. That's going to be made more for hotter weather to allow a bit more breathability. And believe it or not, half line jackets, even though they use less materials, they're more expensive to manufacture because you got to make sure everything looks nice and pretty on the inside of the jacket. Now, speaking of the inside of a jacket, what does a manufacturer mean when they say it's a canvas jacket or it's a glued jacket? Very few are going to admit they're making glued jackets, but that is the vast majority of the jackets out there. So, if you can imagine here, we've got layers of material and the glue jacket, as it sounds, uses an adhesive that actually holds the materials together. Here's the problem is that once you send it to the cleaners and over time, that adhesive starts to come apart. You start to get puckering in on the jacket and that's why a lot of glue jackets just don't last long. Now, with a canvas jacket, this takes a lot more time. This jacket right here is a half canvas jacket. So, that means right up here in this area, they've actually sewn the pieces together. A floating canvas like this, what it is, is it allows the pieces to move around slightly. You're not going to have an issue with the puckering. So, other details I look for on higher end suits, and let me be clear, not every higher end suit has to have these, but they're a good sign. First up, I look at the back of the jacket. What type of vent? If it's got no vent, maybe it's an Italian style, I get it, that's cool. But if it's going with a single vent, that's usually not a great sign. This is the compromise. It's relatively inexpensive to manufacture. I don't like these. They don't really do a great job, especially if you put your hand in your pocket, you're going to expose your backside. But let's look at the double vent. The most expensive to manufacture, I think, keeps the lines nice and crisp and historically, this is the cut, the classic style that you want to go for. Another detail I like to look for right here on the lapel. You should have a boot near hole. Preferably, it should be opened. If it's not, you could open it yourself. But I like this because it goes back to times when men would wear boutonnieres and you still can, by the way. Another quick way to spot quality, look at the type of buttons that they're using. Horn, nut, mother of pearl, these are going to cost a lot more than plastic. Nothing against plastic. And if plastic's your thing, go for it. But I really like the use of higher end buttons because again, it shows that the manufacturer cares about those small historic details. And speaking of buttons, let's talk about the buttons on the sleeve of a jacket. So, if they're working, if they're functional, that's known as surgeon cuffs. Historically, this was for surgeons to be able to roll their sleeves if they're going to be doing surgery on the battlefield, not to get their jacket dirty. And it looks cool, but really there's no functional reason nowadays to have this. And in fact, it can be a detriment. If you're buying a jacket, jacket and you need to get that sleeve adjusted by more than an inch, having the working cuffs can be an issue. So, be careful whenever you're out there looking at jackets. If they've got the working cuffs, understand that you're not going to be able to adjust the sleeve length by more sometimes than just more than like half an inch. So, what did I miss? What would you have added? Let me know down in the comments. So, what video to watch next? Well, if you're into suits, you're going to like this one. I've got Bruce Wayne versus Tony Stark. Which guy wears the suit better? Find out in this video right here, guys. I will link to it down in the description.